The beat of marching feet, the martial music, sounds all too familiar in Latin America. But now comes a glimmer of hope. that rather than bullets, it's ballots which hold the key to the political future of this troubled region. This month, there are presidential elections in four countries with violent histories, Paraguay, Bolivia, Panama, and Argentina. Later this year, there are polls in Chile and Brazil. In Paraguay, voters have the chance to lay the ghost of General Alfredo Stroessner, the military dictator who ran the country for 34 years. Despite his country's evil reputation as a haven for Nazi war criminals and its abysmal human rights record, Stroessner played the host with influential world figures. It all came to an end for Stroessner in February, when he was toppled in a coup by a former ally, General Andres Rodriguez. The announcement of Stroessner's overthrow in front of the new president was greeted enthusiastically in Paraguay's capital, Asuncion. For many people, the fact that he'd ousted Stroessner was enough to guarantee Rodriguez their votes. As the deposed dictator left to live in exile in Brazil, his successor was doing his best not to be cast in Stroessner's mold. The first official opposition rallies in 34 years were seen on the streets, the change was remarkable. One human rights campaigner said, you'd think we'd been living in a democracy for a long time. For the first time, opposition parties have been able to counter the government propaganda machine with television spots of their own. But how much of this new freedom is just a glossy veneer? For opinion polls suggest that from the first days of the campaign, the opposition was fighting a losing battle. Many who originally doubted Rodriguez's sincerity have since been charmed. With Stroessner, one voter said, you could never have walked up and shook his hand like you could with Rodriguez. His television campaign uses a speech condemning the Stroessner years. But there's a darker side to Rodriguez's life he was, after all, second in command of the army under Stroessner. And opponents hint of his possible links with drug smuggling. The optimism felt by many Paraguayans could prove to be well-founded. But the military spectre is ever-present, and joy has turned to tears before. Recent experiences in Uruguay show how quickly political fortunes change in South America. This slick TV commercial was encouraging people to vote in a referendum for justice. The Greens demanding punishment for those responsible for atrocities during Uruguay's years of military rule. The Greens' smiley image seemed to be everywhere in Montevideo, on streets, on bicycles, on balloons. The color had nothing to do with the environment, just the color of their voting paper. Against them, the government campaign, calling for an amnesty for the military men. Early signs were encouraging for the Greens. Thousands turned out at rallies in the capital. Around 50,000 exiles are estimated to have returned, encouraged by the opportunity for redress against their former torturers. But there were soon signs of the old Uruguay. Defense Minister Hugo Medina, a retired army general, dropped broad hints that the armed forces might not accept a victory for the Greens. About 350 members of the security forces were suspected of taking part in torture and forced abductions between 1973 and 1985. But just as the first of the accused officers was due to appear in court in December 1986, President Julio Sanguinetti rushed an amnesty bill through Parliament. The campaign in favor of amnesty stressed the theme of reconciliation. Sanguinetti had been forced to hold the referendum after human rights groups organized a petition calling for the law to be revoked. Under Uruguay's constitution, 25% of the electorate had to sign. Incredibly, the petition reached its target. But as opinion polls had suggested, the pro-amnesty vote, the yellow vote, was successful with a 12% winning margin. 
Yet in Montevideo, the Green vote came out on top, suggesting the issue isn't dead yet. Later this year, Uruguay holds presidential elections. By then, the country's future and that of the region will be far clearer.